I'm going to show you how easy it is to properly stain and finish your furniture projects from construction lumber. Even if you're already experienced with finishing, I have a couple of techniques to share that you might not have seen before, so stick around. Your local home center will have all the products I'm using in this video, or at least something similar. I know you want to jump in and start staining because you're already exhausted from working on your project, and you want to move on to greater and grander things, and your better half is constantly reminding you to finish my towel rack I asked for eight months ago but your stain absolutely relies on a well prepped surface so you gotta get sanding this is what it looks like when you don't sand a 2x4 and put stain on it terrible this is what it looks like when you stain construction lumber that's been sanded with bad technique even worse i know we all love sanding but here's the cliff notes start at 80 grit with your random orbit sander with no more pressure than the weight of your arm and traveling at one inch per second repeat for 120 grit 150 grit and finally 180 grit no higher use a pencil to mark your sanding area so that you know you've sanded enough when the pencil mark disappears vacuum off the surface completely in between grits and when you finish connect your shop vac to your sander for the best results increase sandpaper life and healthier lungs you have to sand it's not optional Sorry. A gel stain is a slightly different type of product than a regular stain. Like the name implies, it has a gel-like consistency that's heavily pigmented, which results in the color penetrating less deep into the wood. This can have an advantage, but there's also a couple of disadvantages as well, which I'll tell you about in a minute. The most common first step in a stain method is to usually use a pre-stain conditioner, which supposedly evens out the look of a stain by reducing the splotching that can be particularly noticeable in construction lumber. And trust me, you don't want your stain resembling my splotchy skin when I was in grade 11. Yeah. But I'm here to say that you don't have to use it with a gel stain. Let me show you with a test. Even though the side with the conditioner is maybe a smidge lighter, I don't notice any splotching or color variations on the side without. So no puberty skin here. Because the gel stain sits on the surface rather than absorbing into the wood, it doesn't give you any variations in color that's caused by differences in density. This is an inherent advantage of a gel stain. So gel stains are simpler, right? Well, sort of, since we eliminated the conditioner and therefore saved time and money, but there's a bit of a trick to them. Removing the excess is absolutely crucial for gel stains. I messed this up on the coffee table I built a while back, and I had to sand off the entire top and redo it because I left too much excess on. It looked terrible and uneven. Otherwise, the application of gel stain is pretty much the same as any other stain. Just excessively wipe it on, then wipe off the excess. Now, one of the biggest misconceptions that new woodworkers have is that a stain will protect your project. No, 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 no. You still need a protective finish on top of your stain, and it's very common to use an oil-based polyurethane, much like this one. Oil-based finishes will typically have an amber look to them, which can give the wood a warmer and richer look, and is also arguably be more durable than a water-based acrylic, which we're going to see in the next method. The oil-based polyurethane is a strong finish, but our application method left some streaks and imperfections that I will show you how to fix in later methods. The gel stain did not excel in obscuring the construction lumber, but rather it accentuated the growth rings in a pretty darn ugly way, in my opinion. The next method will give us more of an even tone. Have you ever heard the ancient proverb, you must use a synthetic bristle brush to achieve a superior finish? Well, you probably haven't because I just made that up. What I'm really trying to say is that that hasn't really been my experience. I don't think there is a correct applicator. If you already have a preference between a bristle brush, a foam brush, and a rag, then stick with what you like. But here's what I find works best for me. For applying the pre-stain conditioner, a foam brush works great and it makes the work go fast. Foam brushes can get a bad rap if people get too violent with them, but treat them like the delicate little tool they are and only use light pressure and they will remain intact. For applying stain, I like to use a clean cotton rag. You can also use foam brushes too, but I would just avoid using something like paper towel because the little fibers can become loose and remain in your finish. For applying a clear finish, I like using foam brushes again, and that's because I've never really had much success cleaning bristle brushes. <laughs> I find they still degrade after a while, which means more time spent and more money wasted. Also, the finishing process isn't done with the last application of finish because I still have more sanding to do. I'll talk more on that in a minute, but this just means that the brush strokes you see now won't matter later. If you've ever used oil-based stains and finishes, you'll remember both how smelly they are and what a pain they are to clean up. So my go-to solution for when I want something quick 
easy and no nonsense is to use water-based stain and finish. Water-based products are easy to clean up with soap and water, and the lack of fumes means you won't incapacitate anyone in your household. The key to using this stain is to use a water-based pre-stain conditioner before starting. But Scott, you just said I didn't have to. I know what I said, but for this water-based stuff, you need to. Don't trust me? Let's do another test. It's apparent how much lighter the tone is with the pre-stain conditioner, but that's not really an issue. If you wanted it darker, I would suggest buying a stain a shade darker than you think to anticipate the effect the conditioner will have. Or an extra coat might darken it up a bit too. But look at how much more even it is than unconditioned. Pay close attention to the areas around the knots. This is a dead giveaway of stained wood, and using the pre-stain conditioner really helps alleviate this. So, yes. It's necessary. All you have to do is brush it on, let it sit for a bit, then wipe it off. You have about a half hour to two hours to apply your stain after the conditioner. The pre-stain conditioner has left the surface feeling a little rough because it raised the grain. So be sure to knock it down with some 320 grit sandpaper so it doesn't feel like sandpaper. The one downside with water-based stains is that they can dry very fast, so you have to work quickly. Because of this, if a section were to dry before you get the stain on the entire surface, it might end up with overlaps that will look uneven. So I wouldn't recommend this for large panels or tabletops or any big projects if you don't have any experience with them. I find the biggest advantage of water-based stains is that they can look much more uniform than oil-based stains. This is really helpful with blotchier softwoods like construction lumber, but I had to apply an extra coat just to ensure I didn't have any overlap marks. For the clear finish, I use this simple water-based acrylic. Since I know you're probably already almost definitely and certainly tired of finishing and eager to move on, these types of finishes are really handy because they dry fast. The caveat is, once again, you have to work quickly. Overlap slightly with your previous path and don't go back and overwork an area already applied. Because water-based acrylic dries so fast, you'd end up smearing it rather than smoothing it out. And that's just a different aesthetic. Even though you can just brush on three coats and be done with it, I'm going to show you a trick for getting a smoother result unlike the previous method. After the second coat, lightly sand the surface with 320 grit and a pad to knock down any high spots. I didn't do this after the first coat because you run a greater risk of sanding through the stain. Vacuum up the dust and apply a final thin coat. Now I did all that without wearing a respirator because I wasn't inhaling any organic fumes. If you use a bristle brush, it's also very easy to clean. My hands aren't full of oil and nothing is going to spontaneously combust. And that's why water-based stains and finishes have the lowest barrier of entry. But there are a few things we can improve upon. First, the look is a little flat. Water-based products don't have the same depth that oil-based products give. They're just kind of the shallow end of the kiddie pool. Second, acrylic finishes aren't typically as durable as an oil-based polyurethane. We'll see if we can improve upon that in the last method. I've talked about how construction lumber can show splotches and inconsistencies when the stain hits it. One proactive thing you can do to avoid more of these deviations in color should happen right when you start your project. I find that splotchiness occurs particularly bad in and around knots, so I try to avoid them. Also, cause I think they look like poop. I know some of you might say, well, it gives a character. And to that I respond, yeah. That's just like uh, your opinion, man. Another aspect of staining any wood particularly dark is that it tends to accentuate the growth rings, and this is especially apparent in cathedral grain. Cathedral grain are those typical arches you see in flats on boards, which you can avoid by buying wider construction lumber and cutting your parts from the edges. This is all to achieve a more uniform look, and if you don't like a more uniform look, your significant other probably does. The last method might be the most involved, but it's just a combination of a few things we've already done before, because I find it gives you the best overall look in the end. I started with the water-based conditioner and then applied the water-based stain like the second method. Now, water-based stain is really good at providing nice even coverage without splotching or variations. But the downside is that it doesn't have the same depth and pop that the oil-based stain has. So let's apply a coat of oil-based stain over that. Why not? Since you want to have a more durable finish than the water-based acrylic, I went back to the oil-based polyurethane, but this time I made it especially smooth. Once again, after the second coat, I sanded with 320 grit to knock down any high spots. After a third coat, I got a little crazy. I sanded with 320 grit again, making sure that I got a nice and flat surface. Then I grabbed some 400 grit and sanded more. Then 600, 800, and finally a thousand grit. It couldn't possibly get any smoother, but 
I'd be lying if I said it looked the best. To bring up the sheen a bit, I applied some paste wax. I let it sit for 10 minutes, and I grabbed a clean rag and buffed the crap out of it. Then I decided it was too glossy, so I rubbed it out with some 3 aught steel wool. Now, I really like this result. We get the even color of the water-based stain without the accentuated grain of the gel stain, and we achieve that luster we wanted from the oil stain. We have a durable finish from our oil-based polyurethane, and we successfully applied it for a super smooth result. Was it more difficult? No. Was it more time consuming? Well, yeah. Do you need to sand that much? Probably not. In fact, you can pretty much combine any of the above techniques to see what works best for you. Now, by no means is this an exhaustive list of the different ways you can stain and finish a project. So if you have a favorite way already, let me know down in the comments below. But the catch is that you have to be able to buy it from a home center since that's the whole point of this video. Altering the color of your construction lumber projects with stain can really level up your furniture's appeal. But if you need help getting to the finish line, I have a great video right here that'll show you a bunch of tips and tricks to start making a successful project out of construction lumber. Bye!